Today, I'll be talking about um, the work that we've been conducting around um, using diagnostic and treatment outcome measures during COVID-19 pandemic, specifically focused on um, these measures, BOSA, Brief Observation of Symptoms of Autism, and the BOSC, Brief Observation of Social Communication Change. Um, I wanna mention that the work that I'm presenting today um, is based on collaborative efforts. Here I've listed um, authors and um, uh, collaborators for the BOSC and BOSA. Um, I also want to mention that um, Dr. Lord, who's one of the authors, um, receives royal royalties from the WPS for the measures like the ADOS, SEQ, and ADIR. And both the BOSA and BOSC are copyrighted by WPS. Um, but the authors are not receiving royalties. So I'll be starting off with um, description of the BOSC um, and our recent work around um, the development of the BOSC. Um, we've noticed some of the gaps in the um, current autism research, um, especially around intervention studies. Um, first of all, measuring subtle changes in social communication can be quite difficult. Um, we also noticed that diagnostic tools like the ADOS are often used in intervention studies to examine treatment response, but they might not be necessarily sensitive enough to um, pick up subtle changes over the course of treatment. Also, solely relying on parent or clinician report could introduce um, biases, so potentially placebo effects or um, they can accentuate treatment response because the parents or the treating clinicians are not blind to treatment status. Um, recent review has also revealed that uh, um, out of about 300 different intervention trials, about 500 different um, uh, treatment outcome measures have been used. So there's huge variability in the use of treatment outcome measures that can really interfere with uh, comparing results across different studies or different um, treatment modalities, and also replication. Um, so we developed the BOSC um, to um, allow it to be sensitive enough to measure changes in core symptoms of autism, which is the social communication behaviors, over a short period of time, um, as short as, as um, six to eight weeks, um, and also to make it reliable. Um, we also use a video of 12-minute um, BOSC session um, that is coded by uh, blind coders who don't have any treatment-related information um, to minimize bias that might come from other measures like parent and clinician report. And then we also wanted to make the measure flexible enough, but also standardized so that it can be used in a reliable and consistent way across different sites and studies. Um, it is also supposed to be user-friendly, so the coders as well as the um, social partners or, or the examiners um, do not receive, do not have to receive intensive training. So um, we have uh, looked at the psychometric properties of the BOSC for especially minimally verbal children. Um, and the minimally verbal version of the BOSC um, is designed to be fun um, and also engaging, and it involves different um, kinds of materials. And as you can see in this picture, we've um, selected different sets of toys and uh, materials that can um, uh, trigger um, or prompt some um, uh, different varying levels of play. Um, so we start with about four minutes of play with um, our first set of toys, and then um, that's followed by two minutes of bubble play, and then also another four minutes of play with new sets of toys, and then another two minutes of bubble play. So here you'll see the example of the um, BOSC administration. So uh, 
um, the administration is supposed to be play-based and then um, semi-structured. Um, so you can see that the examiner here, the social partner, um, is trying to strike the balance between um, encouraging the child to play with the toys on his own without too much prompting also, but um, supporting um, the play so that um, the child can be engaged. So many of the um, items on the BOSC, um, all of the items actually from the BOSC are um, drawn from the ADOS, which is the diagnostic um, observation. Um, and the ADOS includes um, different symptoms that are rated based on zero to two or zero to three um, range. Um, but we wanted to make our scores more sensitive. So we, we expanded the score range from zero to two to zero to five on the BOSC. So the lower scores indicate abnormality being not present versus the higher scores indicate abnormality being present and may significantly impair functioning. And these are the items that um, were drawn from the um, ADOS and we've selected the ones based on our um, empirical data um, that were more sensitive to um, changes. Um, they were more likely, more likely to change over time. And then be, be, uh, based on the factor analyses, we were able to um, derive different factors for these items. So the social communication domain includes symptoms like eye contact, facial expression, gestures, vocalization, social overtures and responses. The repetitive behaviors domain include things like play, um, sensory interest, uh, mannerisms, and stereotype behaviors. And then we've also um, pulled some of the um, additional items um, focused on activity level, disruptive behavior, and anxious behaviors um, to provide um, additional information about other abnormal behaviors that might not be necessarily related to core symptoms. So based on these, you can um, create a domain score to look at changes in social communication specifically or repetitive behaviors, or we can combine these scores to look at um, core symptom domain, changes in core symptom domains. So based on the data that we had for um, toddlers and preschoolers who were getting um, early intervention, we were able to show the validity of the BOSC. Here, the solid lines represent BOSC scores and the dotted lines represent the ADOS scores. Um, so when we use the BOSC that are applied to examiner child interaction, which is actually the ADOS context, but BOSC coding, as well as BOSC codes applied to caregiver child interaction from pre to post treatment, we see significant decreases in symptom levels for these children with autism with effect sizes ranging from 0.5 to 0.6. When we apply the ADOS scores, so ADOS comparison scores or calibrated severity scores or algorithm totals, um, we don't see that the ADOS scores can pick up those changes that are picked up by the BOSC. So this might indicate that the BOSC might be more sensitive measure to um, track um, changes in um, social communication um, in children with autism. So um, we are now um, trying to implement um, the BOSC in home setting so that we can um, look at the treatment response or changes in social communication over time in a more naturalistic setting. Um, so um, in order to do that, um, we've created video-based instruction that is um, sent home with the um, families with um, compact kits um, that can be easily traveled with and then also um, a picnic blanket that can defi help define the space for the families at home while delivering the BOSC. Um, and then we also use the telehealth platform to um, deliver the uh, home BOSC um, session with the families. Um, and we also created an online scoring system so the families or clinicians can upload these videos um, on a HIPAA compliant server, and then the online coding system can um, distribute the videos among uh, blind coders, and the blind coders can um, use the streamlined system to, um, to mark and flag um, 
those uh, symptoms that we are observing. And these quarters are, of course, blind to um, the time point of the treatment or the video uh, before or after treatment or whether the children are receiving treatment or not so that we can have more objective measure. Um, not only we are interested in um, using the um, BOSS context for this um, BOSS coding scheme that we developed that are uh, rated by um, human coders, but we are also very interested in applying uh, machine learning algorithms to detect um, changes in social communication or language or speech uh, um, acoustic properties um, uh, using these uh, videos. So we are working with um, engineers um, led by Dr. Shuri Narayanan um, at USC to um, develop automated algorithms, automated methods to pick up um, uh, treatment response in these children using the BOSC videos that we've collected. Um, we are also very interested in looking at features like um, face uh, to face um, posture, um, or um, uh, joint attention skills like showing or um, giving objects or um, head orientation um, using the machine learning algorithm. And we're hoping that this can give us um, an option to have a more scalable measure that can be applied to a large um, amount of data in conjunction with the behavioral methods that we are using. Okay, so I'm going to switch the gear a little bit and talk about um, the development and the use of the BOSA um, during pandemic. So the BOSA stands for the Brief Observation of Symptoms of Autism. And the BOSA was developed because the ADOS-2, ADOS, which is a diagnostic goal center, diagnostic measure that has been used widely um, in a diagnostic process for clinicians in the U.S. and worldwide, um, is not appropriate to be ad administered via, via telehealth. And we also cannot administer the ADOS in a standardized way uh, while wearing face masks or other PPE because those um, create unnatural social interaction um, and the, um, the measure has not been validated um, based on those. So the BOSA provides a standardized context of activities using um, tasks from the BOSC and the ADOS that can be administered by an adult. So it can be a parent or therapist within about 12 to 40 minutes of observation. And this can be done without PPE in clinic or home because clinicians can stay in the observation room while the families um, de uh, deliver this um, session um, without PPE in the testing room or the clinician can deliver this through telehealth as well. But I want to emphasize that the BOSA has not been um, validated yet. We are currently writing up the first psychometric paper. Um, and we're hoping that we can actually get the paper out in a few couple months so that um, we have a little more evidence um, and, and the BOSA can be used more effectively and widely. Um, the clinicians familiar with the ADOS can observe the BOSA live or through video and then complete uh, many of the ADOS codes. Um, so the ADOS codes can be transferred then into um, a DSM-5 checklist and recoded um, so that we can demonstrate the evidence, the presence or absence of symptoms across different diagnostic domains that are indicated on DSM-5. Um, I wanna emphasize uh, that this is a tool that we designed to assist in um, clinical decision-making during um, pandemic, and it is not meant to replace the ADOS. And the BOSA, because it's a um, short, um, uh, uh, assess, assessment tool, um, uh, which cannot replace the ADOS, which gives a little more uh, rich information, um, we want to emphasize that, emphasize that the BOSA should be used in combination with a thorough developmental history and parent report measure like the ADI. Um, the BOSA has four different versions, um, one minimally verbal version, another 
uh, free speech and young, um, young fluent version. And that's um, for children who have free speech, flexible free speech, or those who are verbally fluent, but who are at younger age range, so around six to eight years. And then we have another version for verbally fluent children uh, from about six to eight to 10 years of age, which is called a fluent speech one version. And then fluent speech two version is appropriate for verbally fluent children over 11 or um, adolescents and adults. As I mentioned briefly, um, initially, um, the BOSA is structured around BOSC activities. So the minimally verbal version, um, again, um, uh, includes um, four minutes of toy uh, play and then two minutes of bubble play, another four minutes of play with different sets of toys, and then two minutes of bubbles. So I can show you how the um, BOSA is um, administered for minimally verbal um, child with autism. <laughs> Bubbles a little bit. Um, so we can pop bubbles. Pop bubbles. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He breaks. <gasps> pop, pop, pop. <gasps> So this play context give us information um, about some of the opportunity um, for us to observe some of these um, autism symptoms. Um, and then um, the BOSA for the free speech and young fluent version um, includes um, similar um, tasks. Um, so um, a, a session, four minute um, task with toys and then two minute um, activity with dollhouse, which gives some structure, but um, opportunity for the child to have back and forth verbal exchanges. And then another two minutes of bubbles and four minutes of play and two minutes of dollhouse um, activity. So you'll see how it's delivered for a child who's uh, more verbal. Cooking. And cakes. Well, that is Oh, here. The button is right here. <gasps> what are you making? You're not making anything? Well, I'm Daddy Pig, and I really like to make bacon. There's no bacon. There's no bacon? I can't finish. <laughs> okay, then how about we make some broccoli? Yeah. Okay, let's go make some broccoli. It's cooking. Yeah. <laughs> Finish the house. Mm -hmm. Give them We're going to skip to the dollhouse. Will you put it in the box? The red one. Oh, look, I think I see something behind the green one. What door is it? The number four. It's the number four. Nice job finding the right key. <gasps> What's behind there? Everyone! Everyone is behind that door! How silly is that? We have three people. I think we're still missing one. It's number three. Which door is it going to be behind? Oopsies. Is it locked? Knock, knock, knock. Are you in there? No, no one's in there. No one's in there. Let's ring the doorbell. Knock, friend, where are you? 
here, you can see that um, having the material like the doll, um, the dollhouse helps the child to have something um, concrete, but also um, helps the examiner engage the child in some back and forth verbal exchanges, um, which we expect to see in these verbal children. Okay. Um, and then um, for more um, highly fluent um, children, we um, have different sets of toys. Um, uh, we might start with, we will start with the basketball, um, tabletop bas basketball um, game, and then go into pop the pig um, um, activity. We sometimes use Jenga for this and have um, conversation cards that go with um, this activity so that we can, again, get some information about how the child can engage in back and forth um, conversation with some support. Um, and then we'll have conversation without any materials present. So without a lot of support there, and then um, engage in um, another conversation card activity with the Papa Pirate um, toy, and then go into conversation. So you'll see how this is done. I had a bigger pile anyway. Yeah, you did have a bigger pile. All right, last round. Nice. <laughs> I only get one card. Now I have two. You know my trick of finding the easy ones. Nice. What's your favorite color? My favorite color is blue. So is mine. Yours is too? Actually, I actually have two favorite colors. What's your other one? Green. Oh, then I'll go for a green one. <laughs> Would you rather have fur like a cat or scales like a fish? Oh, I'd rather have fur. You'd rather have fur? Mm -hmm. Why? Because I can, I wouldn't need a blanket. That's true. And you'd be really soft. Yeah. Okay, your turn. Mm -hmm. So here the examiner and the child take turns um, taking block, a block out of Jenga game and then also looking through the cards that correspond with the um, color on the Jenga pieces. Okay, so then um, we have the F2 version for children um, from 11 years of age, as well as for adolescents and um, adults. And um, we play with slapjack um, game and then go to Jenga and have conversation and then play also another game um, like suspend um, and then um, get into conversation for two minutes. So we'll see the example of how this is delivered um, for um, adults. When you are afraid, what do you do to make yourself feel better? Hmm, when I'm afraid, um, I think I give myself a pep talk. I really don't like going hiking, so I tell myself I can do it. Sometimes I can, but sometimes it doesn't work out always. Mm -hmm. It's your turn. Yes, I think so. How would you, how would someone know if you are angry? I wear my anger on my sleeve. Mm. Yeah, me too sometimes. Okay, so the BOSA um, creates this um, standardized context for us to be able to observe um, some of these autism symptoms, especially around social communication. And once the BOSA is delivered, um, the clinicians in, um, might be in the observation room or um, on telehealth platform. Um, and um, based on the observation, we score the ADOS protocol, which um, can, and there are different modules that we can select based on the age and language level. And then those ADOS codes are then um, transferred to the DSM-5 checklist that we've also created as a part of the BOSA. Um, and sometimes the ADOS score, again, ranges from zero to two or zero to three, can be converted into zero, one versus two, three. So zero, one will be converted into zero, or two to three might convert it into one to indicate absence or presence of symptom. Sometimes we will um, transfer it in um, this way, zero to zero versus one to three to a one. Um, and um, we tally all these, um, all the presence of symptoms um, 
um, on the DSM-5 checklist to be um, to determine um, whether the symptoms that are um, indicated on DSM-5 are present during this 12 to 40 minute observation. And then we can also combine information from parent report or other information to be able to supplement um, as well. So um, as I told you, um, the, um, the transfer or the recording um, from the ADOS to um, the BOSC of uh, the BOSA um, is uh, now based on empirical data. Um, so based on about 3,000 individuals, we looked at sensitivity and specificity of these items that map onto the, the DSM-5 checklist uh, from the ADOS um, and then determine whether we should have a cutoff at zero versus one, two, three, or zero, one versus two, three. And we were trying to to maintain sensitivity and specificity around 70 to 80 percent, um, but, um, but specificity was of course prioritized to be at least um, at 65 percent. Um, so these numbers are empirically based, but these were derived from the ADOS codes applied to the ADOS context. So we are now looking at how BOSA coding um, so these codes um, that are applied to the BOSC or BOSA activities um, um, would look like in terms of validity um, in our first psychometric paper. So the validation efforts are currently underway. Once we observe these symptoms um, based on the BOSA activities, um, we can then um, uh, describe these symptoms in our um, report or in our um, clinic, clinic, um, clinical diagnostic pr um, process. Um, and um, uh, if um, the um, child uh, shows enough symptoms um, in combination with other report like the ADI, which is the clinician um, delivered um, diagnostic interview, we can make a decision about clinical decision about the presence um, of the diagnosis or the um, diagnostic criteria. Um, so in summary, we are hoping that the implementation of the BOSC procedure in home setting, um, as well as the use of the BOSA um, um, in the, um, uh, during pandemic can be useful um, when we cannot deliver the ADOS in a valid way. Um, so we are hoping that especially for the BOSA, we can get the first psychometric um, data out in a couple months. Um, and um, I know that um, there might be some questions and I'm happy to answer them um, on the Hoova app if you can put those um, questions in. Um, and you can always reach me via email. Thank you so much.